is such a great town. This is, this is a good drinking town, which is why I love New York, because I live in LA now. LA is like the most worst drinking town you could possibly ask for. Because LA, it's way too spread out. You gotta drive everywhere. Like, if you hustle in LA, you can get two, three DUIs in a single night. You really try. You win double points, but it's the same cop pulling you over multiple times. And they're trying to curve it out there now. Like, they have all these ways to get home safe. You can still take a taxi, you can take an Uber. If you're 20, you need to score Molly. Lyft is the right one for you. <laughs> or they have a new service they just introduced in Southern California, and it's called Sober Scooter. <laughs> get ready to get creeped out. Listen to this. So let's say you're out drinking, right? You don't want to drive your car home, so you call Sober Scooter. <laughs> that means somewhere else in town, there's a gaggle of dudes. <laughs> and they all have a scooter. <laughs> One of them gets the call, hops on his scooter, and rides his trusty steed out to the bar where you are. You give him your car keys. You guys walk out to your car, he puts you in the passenger side. Pops the trunk, puts his scooter in your trunk. Gets in the driver's side and drives your drunk ass back to your own house in your own vehicle. And if you think that's a good idea, you've never been stabbed, because that's the creepiest thing I've ever heard. It's like, if you tip him, does he come in and read you a bedtime story? No thanks. I don't need that weird unknown where I live. You know what he does afterwards? He goes home to grandma's basement to put on the skin of whatever client he had last week. It's not a good business model. It's like, that's an adult that rides a scooter which means by definition, he sucks at driving a car. <laughs> you think I'm gonna let Vespa Gary upgrade to my Ford Fusion? Hell no! That's right, ladies, I said Ford Fusion, so get wet and take a number. It's gonna be a long night. <laughs> I was excited when I got it. I bought the Ford and it was last year, and I've never bought myself a new car, so I'm pumped, I get to the dealership. The very first thing the guy shows me in the car is he walks me out to it, and he pops the trunk. And he's like, hey dude, check this out. Inside the trunk, there's a handle you can pull in case you get locked in your trunk. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, that's gonna ruin my dating life. Are you serious right now? They can just free themselves anytime they think the evening's over? I don't think so, sweetie. I paid for that box of wine. Can you get back in there, please? Just move my scooter out of the way. There's plenty of room in there. That's how I met my girlfriend. Um, I'm excited, I have a girlfriend now. She's funny, she's beautiful, she's nonfiction, which is awesome. And I had to make a move, because I'm getting to that point in my life when you look around and all your friends are starting to meet people and they get married, they have kids. Then you always have that one idiot friend that never got it together. This is what it looks like, right here. Michael Bublé after a bender. This is what it looks like. And it's becoming a problem in my family. Because in my family, there were two single people left. It was me and my mom. And that sucks, because my mom's out there. She's making an effort, she's trying new things. You haven't hit rock bottom till you bump into your mom on a dating website. <laughs> I mean, it was bound to happen. She's a cougar, I'm a big game hunter. We're gonna cross paths eventually. That's what I was always into, man. I was into older women. And now I'm dating a girl, she's eight years younger than me. And you know what that means. Emojis. <laughs> lots and lots of emojis. And look, I don't mind if you put a smiley face in the text, but when your entire message is nothing but pictures, I don't have time to solve your little puzzle, kiddo. What do you want to say? You know what, just pull that handle, get out of the trunk, and tell me exactly what you want to say. Women, older women, they know how to text. When older women send a text message, it's short, concise, to the point. It's like, come over, bring alcohol, get tested. They're serious about this. And what do you hear about older women, boys? What do you hear? You hear they're great in bed, right? And that's awesome. What worries me is, how did they get that good? Because you start thinking about it. You're like, wait, wait, wait. Nobody just wakes up the star of Cirque du Soleil. That takes years and years. It's intimidating. You hook up with a cougar, you go back to her place. And it feels like you're walking into old Yankee Stadium for the very first time. 
Because you're just thinking about all the greats that have played here before you. She's got jerseys retired in her living room. Sign above her bedroom door, it says, play like a champion today, and you gotta slap it. <laughs> That's how I was gonna do it. I was gonna meet an older woman, we'd fall in love, spend the rest of our life, the rest of her life together. That's how you do it. Because with an older woman, you never have to have the kids' conversation. Are we gonna have kids? Are we not gonna have kids? If they wanted to have kids, they already took care of that. That kid's a teenager, and I'll punch a teenager. If you're old enough to skateboard, you're old enough to get knocked off it, okay? I never wanted to be a parent, because then you gotta raise kids from birth. And you can't discipline kids the way you used to be able to. You can't. Like, if you try to spank kids today, they're gonna tell on you. <laughs> they're gonna find an adult they trust, a teacher, a news crew, they're gonna rat you out. When I was a kid, if you were the tattletale, that's why you got spanked in the first place. And I think my parents did it right, because when we were kids, if we acted up, we got spanked. We got spanked. That's all that ever happened until the road trip. <laughs> Remember the road trip with your family? Disciplined at 79 miles an hour on the highway? I was an Air Force brat, so we move around all the time. Every road trip, same situation. Dad drives, mom's in the passenger seat, three kids in the back. Now, as soon as the road trip begins, my mom passed out. <laughs> She's asleep. Something about spending time with her own family really made my mom drowsy. So she's out, so now dad's gotta take care of everything. And if we got loud in the back seat, the first thing my dad did, never yelled at us right away. First thing he did, he just got really quiet. <laughs> Focused, like he's planning exactly what he's gonna tell the authorities after this bloodbath ensues. <laughs> and then if we got louder, that's when it got physical. That's when you see dad driving with this hand. <laughs> then this hand comes off the wheel. This hand grabs the wheel, so this hand is free to just hit whatever he can find in the back seat. <laughs> he was good, he did like three good ones. And then we're like, oh, he's done. Nope, there's a second half to this game. Mm. And that was always cool with me and my older sister because we always made my little brother ride bitch. As soon as that hand came up, we're like, get in there, Robbie. Learn some life lessons. <laughs> and if that didn't shut us up, all he had to do is go to level three, which is where he says, if you kids don't shut up, I'm pulling this car over and I'm gonna spank you in public. And you saw that today, somebody's calling child services. Back when I was a kid, other cars saw that and started honking their horns. The police come by, that's awesome, dude. Sober Scooter comes by. Can I play with those kids after you're done? My name is Mark Ellis. You guys are fantastic. Thank you very much.